One of the coolest new features of Illustrator CC 2019 was without a doubt the freeform gradient. We covered it already in a few other videos, but this time I decided to compare it to the gradient mesh. They are surprisingly similar and yet different. So let's see if we can find out which one is better. So as you can see, in this composition, we already have a few elements and all of these were created with the gradient mesh feature. So when I use the selection tool and I click on any of these objects, we can see the mesh points and the mesh lines. Even the background is a big gradient mesh. So if I turn off all of the other layers, I can just show you that that is already a gradient mesh and I can move these points around and I can also move these handles around to change the direction of the gradients. I am going to talk a bit more about how to create a gradient mesh and how to work with it properly. But first, let me show you the freeform gradient. I already made a tutorial about it when it came out first with the introduction of CC 2019. But there's a couple of additional things that I would like to mention. And mainly this video is going to be a comparison between the two features and to help you decide which one is better for your workflow. So I'm going to use the pencil tool with which I can very quickly create an abstract shape like these liquid blobs that we have here. So there you go. That looks fine for me. And I am going to keep this in a separate layer group. So I'm just going to drag it out and create another group here. And I'm just going to call it gradient or maybe freeform will make more sense. Freeform. There you go. So we can just see it better which one is which. So those are all meshes there below. And this one is different. I'm going to set it to a darker color just so we can see it better on the background. The way you apply a freeform gradient is by pressing G on the keyboard. That's the gradient tool. And make sure that the fill color is selected. You can check that by pressing X on the keyboard. With that, you can switch between the stroke and the fill attributes. So once the fill color is on top, the gradient options should come up here and all of them will become available. So notice that when I switch to the stroke, the freeform gradient, the third one, is not available by default. It's the same here in the properties panel as well. You can see it when once I switch to the fill, it comes up and becomes available. So now we can click on that and it's going to start with a blank option in which it usually puts down one or two pins or points as it's officially called for the freeform gradients. Now these points can be changed in color and it's not that interesting until you add additional points. So if I click on this shape again, you can see that it is a second point or pin. And once I change the color, now we start to see an interesting transition. I can click again here on the right and pick another color. And then I can start moving these points around and you can see how all these colors are interacting with each other. Now, here is one of the biggest advantage straight away compared to a gradient mesh. You are not restricted to define a mesh at the beginning where you would need to input the columns and rows for your mesh. You can freely add as many points as you want as you go along and you can also freely move them around without messing up the mesh. What I mean by that is that these points are completely free. As you can see, I can swap them around easily and all the colors will interact with each other. Even if I move them all close to each other, it's still fine. I can even move this point in between the other two if I wanted to. It's quite trippy <laughs> to do this, to be honest. And it's really fun to play around with. I'm just going to put another color in here just to have a bit more variety. And also I put another one here on the right. So now we have quite a lot of transitions going around here. And you can see already it's starting to look similar to the other elements in the background. Now, of course, if you have more points, you can create even more complex transitions. But let me show you what I meant about messing up the mesh. So if I zoom closer here and let's say I wanted to do the same as with the freeform gradient and move one of the points around and swap them around. Once I move this over the other one, see what's happening here is that I created an overlap of the mesh or the mesh points are overlapping each other. And this is not something you would like to do. 
So definitely what you want to do is when you work with gradient meshes that these points are nicely spread out and not overlapping each other. So in this case, if I wanted to have this bright color on the left, I would have to select that mesh point with the direct selection tool, choose the color, then go back to the other one and choose the other color. So it's much longer to do that quick swap than with the freeform gradient. It's still possible and it's not that hard, but it just takes a little bit longer. The other difference with these two techniques is that the freeform gradient has an option to increase the spread of a color. So when you use a pin or a point, you can increase the intensity of it. It's almost like an opacity, you can think of it. So when you increase it, this would be 100% and this would be 0% or it's still visible but lower, let's say 50%. Or you can even think of it as spread as it's called here on the top. So that's actually the value that you are changing. So when you select any of these, you can increase the spread up here as well and that will increase the intensity of it. Now, of course, you can also double click on it and change the color. So that's a quick access to it. So you're never restricted to the color that you decided to use in the beginning. You can always update it later. And again, as you can see, you have a lot of flexibility on how you use these pins. But that's not all because you can also create lines. So let's say I switch to lines here on the top and then I click one more time here and change the color to purple. Then I can click and even create curves. As you can see, this feature works by default like the curvature tool. There's that tool that was introduced, which is very similar to the pen tool that draws automatically curves instead of straight lines. So let me just show you that as well quickly. If I use the pen tool with the default colors, I'm just going to deselect everything. That's a useful shortcut, by the way, command shift a and then use the pen tool set it to default colors and i'm going to start drawing maybe with a thicker stroke something like that so with the pen tool you draw straight lines by default right and if you want to create a curve you click and drag that's going to create a curve while with the curvature tool which is here in the toolbar you can draw and automatically it's going to create curves and notice how I'm continuing to draw the same path. I'm just going to put this on top of everything else so we can see it. So when I click, it automatically bends everything and always tries to create a nice continuous flow on my path. So it's almost like the inverted version of the pen tool. The reason I mentioned that is because that was also fairly recent and a lot of users wouldn't even know about it, especially since the toolbar by default in Illustrator doesn't even show all of the tools. So it's worth going to the edit toolbar option here at the bottom and from the drop down, make sure you choose the advanced option. If you are set to basic, I, it might not even show up. So it will hide a lot of tools by default. Coming back to the freeform gradient, when you use the line feature instead of the points, it automatically creates this nice continuous curve, which is the same exact way like the curvature tool would work. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can, of course, still move these points around. And when you have a line, instead of a point. That means even when you're moving a point that has a higher spread, let's say this one here, it's still going to create a nice natural boundary, almost like stopping that color to seep into those areas around the edge. As you can see, there's the border. And if I move it beyond it, again, I can have a nice rim light or highlight around the edges. So these are really cool ways of creating shapes and working with the gradient. But the gradient mesh also has a neat feature which gives you a lot of control and that is the handle points. So when I select any of these mesh points, notice how we have the handles around them. So there's actually four handles, more than what you would normally get on an anchor point. An anchor point normally has two handle points, but here we have four because it's a mesh. That means I can use the direct selection tool and move these points around and notice that there's two pairs of handles. So this is one, like we could call it the horizontal handle, and then we can 
also adjust the vertical handles or pair of handles, but you can even control them independently or in a way break the connection between these pairs if you use this tool called Anchor Point Tool. Shift C is the shortcut for it. With this one, you can grab an anchor and you can see now it moves independently. By the way, if I go into my layer, I can change the color maybe to something brighter like yellow and then you can see these anchors much better. So now when I move this around, you can see I could break it and create a completely different curve. So each of these out of the four, I can handle separately and I can set up interesting transitions. And even by doing this, I already changed the structure of the colors and created almost like a three dimensional transition here. So when I zoom out, you can see it looks very different to how it was before. So even without changing the position of that mesh point or the color, just by messing around with the handles, I could create these interesting transitions. So this is something that the gradient mesh definitely has as an advantage compared to freeform gradients. And just because I created a freeform gradient from scratch, let me also show you how you create a gradient mesh from scratch. Again, I'm going to use the pencil tool, draw another abstract shape. There you go. And then if I go to the object menu here, I will find create gradient mesh, choose that. And remember I mentioned you have to specify rows and columns. Let's say I'm going to use four by four and then I'm going to click OK. So that's how it starts. And then instead of the points here, you have these mesh points which you can move around and while having them selected with the direct selection tool, you can change their color. So it's a slightly different method and it can take longer to set up, but then you have a little bit more control over them by using the handles. And of course, you can also add additional columns and rows by using the mesh tool. Shortcut is U. You can click anywhere and it's going to not only add a single point, but it will add a whole set of mesh points. You can see that it's created a column and a row. So a lot of additional mesh points were created. Now, what's true for both of these methods is that the more points you have, whether it's a freeform gradient or a gradient mesh, it's going to get more complex to work with. But of course, with more points, you can also get to a more sophisticated and complex result. So that's all you need to know about the differences between these two important features in Illustrator. And I would say there's no better tool even the older tools like the gradient mesh are still relevant. The freeform gradient doesn't make it obsolete. You should learn both of these techniques and sometimes you can use them in combination to create unique and interesting results. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.